Rokuhodo Yotsuhiro Biori is one of those quiet slice of life shows that could so easily become either dull or what I'll call falsely quiet. Yotsuhiro Biori thankfully avoids those two extremes. It focuses on the customers and four man staff, and I'll get to that later, of a small traditional Japanese cafe that serves tea, coffee, and sweets. They're called Kisaten. Uh, in contrast to a modern cafe that tends to focus on speed and convenience, a Kisa 10 is meant to be a more relaxing experience where you come in and are able to just take a break from regular life. So it's a natural fit for a Slice of Life series. The staff, particularly the characters of the staff, also the staff of the restaurant, also manages to walk that thin line between the two traps of either being bland and being ridiculous. Anime tends to fall into those traps. Uh, they each have a distinct personality. The manager is a quiet, somewhat intense kind of worry wart. Um, not extremely so, but he's the, the one who tends to, to get a little worried about things. The pastry chef is a young blood who's working really hard to prove himself. The barista is one of those cheerful, outgoing types. And the chef is the quiet, unflappable type. Now, when I saw that this was, a, this was a show about four men, and by the way, they also lived together in addition to working together, I assumed we'd see them shirtless or at the beach or something like that, or perhaps something even more explicit. Surprisingly, that is not the case. There is nary a hint of fan service in this show, though, of course, the situation allows fans to indulge in wild, imaginative rides. Now, while the show does include some storylines about these characters, the, this four-man staff, it, is, it spends most of its time on the customers of the cafe. Different people coming in and the problems they're having in their life, and then how spending some time at the cafe kind of relaxes them and recharges them and reorients them for the day. And again, this is one of those things where I think they do a good job of not turning the cafe into a potion, where it just restores your vitality and everyone who comes in is just, you know, happy and, and a better person for having been at the cafe. It's a bit too ridiculous. But it does focus on the, the power of a neighborhood watering hole to be a civilizing influence in that sense. Something that brings people together, that gives people a little treat over the course of their uh you know their time in their lives and it does so in a responsible way right where it's not addictive it's not gouging you for money you know you have to keep this thing running and it's just really neat seeing something um um this kind of sweet in that sense ha 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 and what's great is how well the art flows into this sense of the show being relaxing. It has this wonderfully muted color palette. Um, a lot of pastels, a lot of just very simple um, colors and simple patterns uh, without ever feeling uh, washed out or bland. It all feels right for this. The animation also fits this really well. This is not a high action show, so the characters are not running around doing crazy things, which requires a lot of expensive animation. But when they do move, they move correctly. You know, one of the things I, I really like is how if there are characters sitting around and talking, it's not just static images of them sitting there with lip flaps, then cut to a drawing and some lip flaps. There is some movement. Someone will turn to look at somebody and you'll see them uh, take on an expression. You know, there is animation and movement in simple dialogue scenes that wouldn't have to be there if they were just being cheap. So I never felt like I was watching a show that was... Um, uh, that was cheap, even though it's you know, there's never going to be you know, incredibly incredibly smooth animation. Although there is a, a, a sequence in I think episode three. This is very over the top and a lot of fun. So I I also need to mention the music. Um, the music is this lovely background thing, and it's one of those weird things where there's not a lot of of music I remember from the show, but I think that's appropriate. It's meant to be this background thing woven into the story. It doesn't call attention to itself. 
Um, the, and because there aren't a lot of moments that are big and highly dramatic where music needs to raise your emotions or move your emotions in one way. Uh, instead, the music takes its appropriate spot in the whole uh, scenario. Um, now, let me mention a few more things about um, the kinds of stories that this tells, because I think it's worth mentioning two things. One is that there is a surprisingly um, relatively dark episode about two thirds of the way through, which deals with a serious social issue. And it impressed me how well the show was able to tackle that in a way that felt appropriate. Um, it didn't feel out of place for the show, but it is, it is definitely a tonal shift for the show for at least that episode. Uh, also, there is an ongoing plot, uh, not even a plot line, uh, there is an ongoing um, background story question that is opened and brought up occasionally throughout the course of the series. Um, and when you get to the ending, um, I can imagine some people being disappointed with the ending. And again, no spoilers. But I think it is appropriate for the show. So, you, in other words, you're going to see storylines in here, but you're not necessarily going to see um, um, the kind of ending you'll see in other shows. This is not that kind of a TV series. That enough said. Don't I don't want to don't want to even hint at anything there. Um, but I I found it satisfying when I thought about it for a little bit. I was kind of surprised initially. So it's kind of one of the nice things about the show is that I found myself consistently impressed. Not because it was blowing me away with plot twists or uh, incredibly deep things to think about, but because there was so much quality worked into this in a way that was perfectly calibrated for the kind of show it is. It is true slice of life in the sense that you're now experiencing somebody else's um, life and their experiences. You're, you're, you're walking in somebody else's shoes, um, but in a way that isn't, isn't stressful. It, it's just somebody else's life. So I found myself charmed by the series. I found myself really empathizing with their point about these sort of little neighborhood you know, community centers, if you will, where folks get together and, and have a little break and get to know each other. I think it's a really neat thing. And um, so I certainly, you know, enjoyed my time at, uh, at Rocojodo, this little cafe. And I hope you will too if you're looking for something a little bit more chill than your regular action series. And, uh, yeah, what more can I say?